Hey Salesforce developers, it's Friday and we're getting ready to complete the final unit of the app development Salesforce DX Trailhead module. But first, I've got some great news. We've heard your feedback and are giving you a few more days to complete the Don't Stop Deploying Challenge. You've now got until 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time on Tuesday, September 26th to submit your entry. All right, with that, let's get back into it. Today's unit is Convert and Deploy an Existing App, where we're going to generate Salesforce DX compatible source code from an existing app's metadata and push it to a scratch org. Before we begin, we've got one final interview with a long-term ISV and tooling partner, Scott Wells. Hey guys, welcome back to the Don't Stop Deploying Challenge. We are joined today by Scott Wells, an ISV and tooling partner. How are you doing, Scott? Hey, how's it going? Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Could you tell us a little bit about your background in the Salesforce development community? Sure. Um, so I got into Salesforce development in late 2010, early 2011 as an, uh, an ISV partner. Uh, worked for a company that was moving their products into uh, Salesforce, using Salesforce as the front end of the application. Um, led a team uh, basically implementing a set of products as, as managed packages. And um, am still an ISV partner today. Uh, along the way, I also uh, took on a side project to try to ease the development process. Um, and that evolved into something called Illuminated Cloud, which is an IDE for Salesforce development as a plug-in to uh, JetBrains IntelliJ IDEA. So uh, I kind of wear two hats in the community. One is an ISV partner and the other is a tooling partner. So I've, you know, I definitely kind of cover the bases there. Awesome, awesome. And if I understand correctly, you've been, you've been working on Salesforce DX since it launched as developer preview. That's right, yeah. Uh, they were kind enough to invite me into an early preview based on some of the ISV relationship uh, aspects. And uh, so, yeah, I got to see it really from, as far as I could see, from the initial ideas being shopped around all the way to, you know, the, the implementation that exists today. Cool, cool. So tell me, why are you excited about Salesforce DX? Oh, um, I mean, everything. It's, it's, to me, it's amazing that Salesforce uh, w was given the opportunity to take a step back and look at the challenges faced by people implementing on the platform and kind of take a holistic approach to trying to solve those problems. Um, you know, as an ISV partner, we struggled, um, I think like, like all ISV partners do, to integrate the, the packaged application model into uh, our daily development processes, you know, continuous integration, continuous deployment types of processes. And um, a lot of the things that we had to, to roll on our own uh, with the existing infrastructure uh, prior to Salesforce DX, you can tell that that was all contemplated and baked into it as first class concept. So I love the fact that it's being designed for mature software development best practices. Uh, in a similar vein, who do you think Salesforce DX is built for? Uh, you know, I, I, it, again, it seems to me that it was born out of the use cases that are primarily uh, geared towards ISVs and packaged application developers, but you know, it's obvious over time, uh, additional feedback through the developer preview and the, and the pilot and the beta, that feedback from really everyone that develops on the platform was, was funneled into the requirements. Uh, you know, speaking with some of the folks that uh, have kind of led the, the design and implementation of it, it's very obvious that, you know, the goal is to be able to have everyone that writes code on the platform follow, you know, source-driven development, version control is the single source of truth, things like that. So I don't know that it necessarily excludes anyone. If you're building software on the platform, it, it seems like it's meant to support you. But, but to me, I think that, uh, you know, ISV partners are probably going to immediately benefit from it the most because, I think they were probably already in that mode of source-driven development. It's just going to ease the, their existing processes. Cool. Uh, what do you think the biggest problem Salesforce DX solves for developers is? Um, I, I think probably the biggest problem is how do you draw a line around the metadata that defines an application and, and store that somewhere that you can manage it over time. And again, it's a problem I think people have solved on their own, but I think this formalizes that that line or that box that you draw around it and say, this is my feature set, my value add on top of this platform that already exists. And, and now I, I can, I can see what it is. I can evolve it over time. I can collaborate with my team on it. it you know, it's, it's very distinct now, whereas in the past it was a bit muddy versus the other contents of say the corporate organization or, or even your development, uh, developer edition organizations. Cool. How do you think uh, Salesforce DX is going to improve development on the platform? Uh, I think it comes down to um, it, it, it streamlines moving metadata back and forth, deciding, um, again, what, what the boundaries of your application are, uh, 
team development, it definitely helps to formalize the way the teams interact with one another. Um, you know, collisions have been a big problem in the past. There have been ways to avoid it, but as with everything else, everybody kind of rolled their own version of it. Uh, and I think at this point, it, it, it forces a particular model of individuals working their own environments, collaborating, sharing through a shared repository like version control before you push those features into uh, a production environment, whether that's a sandbox for staging and production or whether that's packaging for a packaging org, uh, I think that it formalizes the process that metadata flows all the way through the system. Awesome. You mentioned team development. Uh, what, what do you think, uh, or how do, how do you think Salesforce DX is going to change team development for Salesforce now? Um, like I said, it's, you know, those of us that have been integrating Salesforce into existing soft development processes uh, have already been doing team development following a model that I think, so it's the same model that I think they'll apply to Salesforce DX. Salesforce DX will support it much, much, much better. And, and to add a little substance to that, you know, where I've worked in the past as an ISV or I work now, uh, you know, we would, we would take the metadata and check it into a version control system and share through that and version it over time. You could very clearly see the, the evolution, the differences over time. Um, we ran automated build processes to deploy it into, uh, you know, automated test environments for regression harnesses and things like that. So we did that, but we had really had to build a lot of scaffolding in order to make that work. And, and, and what we had to build is now a small set of command line invocations against these ephemeral scratch orgs. So we don't have to go clean out an org first and reload it. It's going to make the times go down. It's going to make the repeatability better. Um, we'll spend less time worrying about things that are outside of our domain expertise and more time solving the problems that we should be solving, which is how do we give our customers value? Awesome, awesome. So we were talking a little bit earlier about the fact you've been uh, working with Salesforce DX since dev preview. That's a of curiosity. Have there been any major, any major problems that you solved that you couldn't solve before or any other major time savings that you might have uh, <clears throat> benefited from since using Salesforce DX? Yeah. Do you just to clarify? Do you mean relative to um, the developer preview or relative to what existed before Salesforce DX? Uh, to what existed before Salesforce DX. Okay. Great. Yeah. I mean, to me, we we got to a point, and I think I think other ISVs have as well, and other developers on the platform have as well. We got to a point where we could solve most of the problems, but we had to we had to create so much software ourselves to do it. And uh, one of the one of the first things I saw with Salesforce DX is is again, it's just out of the box. And, and, and probably the best concrete example that I can give is, um, you know, a developer edition org, which is what most of us use prior to this, developer edition orgs and sandboxes to do development. Um, it's, it's the old analogy of uh, uh, pets versus cattle, if you've ever heard that. It's pretty big in, you know, server computing. Uh, but the idea is, is it something that stays around for a long time and you have to tend to it with care and feeding and make sure it stays healthy? Or is it something that you can basically use and discard and then create a new one and use and discard? And previously with developer edition orgs and sandboxes, there's a weight to them. If you need to uh, clear them out to basically reload them, you have to do a lot of work yourself. It's time consuming. Clearing out an org could take 10, 15, 20 minutes before you actually get to what you want to do. Scratch org, run a CLI, spin it up, then go populate it. Two minutes later, you're off to the races. And to me, the time savings, especially if you're talking about iteration multiple times throughout the day, the time savings is incredible. Awesome, awesome. That, that's really exciting. Yeah, I've never heard that analogy of the pets versus cattle. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So, a little lighter question for you: uh, Have you got a favorite feature within Salesforce DX? It's you know, it's hard to pick it apart because. Any, any one piece of it doesn't really exist without the other pieces, right? Scratch orgs, the CLI, the API that the CLI presents to the world. But if I had to pick one thing, um, you know, given that I do wear two, <coughs> excuse me, two hats, uh, a, a tooling partner, creating an IDE that is now sitting on top of Salesforce DX and an IDE, uh, I'm sorry, an ISV partner that is driving automated processes and, and doing iterative development throughout the day and throughout the week. To me, the, the way that the CLI was constructed and the way that it is made available to different consumers is outstanding. I mean, as an ISV, uh, as an ISV partner, uh, the fact that you can drive it and have reliable outputs like exit codes, you can decide, do you fail your build right now based on what just happened or not? And then as a, um, as a tooling partner, building an IDE on top of it, 
they have a programmatic interface where I, I can actually send in structured requests and get back structured responses and actually have a reliable coupling to the, to the CLI um, for building tools around it. And then just as a CLI uh, user, the fact that I can go run it and get kind of more display oriented output and see what just happened for just, you know, standard usage to the CLI, the fact that they contemplated all those use cases and built them in from the get-go is, is unbelievable. So I love the fact that it supports, you can tell that they funneled all of the feedback from all the different parties and then supported that with that being the, the CLI being the primary interface. Awesome, awesome, thanks for sharing. Uh, another, another easy one for you, uh, what are some of your favorite development tools? Uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit biased there. So on the IDE side, Illuminated Cloud, um, but as far as other aspects of it, um, you know, when it comes to something like version control, it's another thing I love about DX is the fact that it, it's a bring your, your own tool to the table type of design. So, uh, you know, over the past 20 years, I've used a combination of Perforce and, and, and Git. Um, and, you know, I don't know that I could pick one over the other. Right now I'm using Git. You know, I love the distributed version control system aspects of it. Um, I, I love the lightweight nature of it in some ways. Um, so I would probably say that right now. As far as uh, you know, the automated build tools, um, uh, you know, Jenkins is the one I'm most familiar with. It's the one that I've used the most, so it's more favorite by default. But um, you know, I, I, I think it's as as um, as much as it seems like a punt. The real answer is I love the fact that we can bring whatever tools we want, and Salesforce DX just inherently supports them. Awesome. And for those for those members of our audience who aren't familiar with Illuminate Cloud, can you just give a, can you give us a you know a high level overview of what the IDE provides? Sure. Um, I mean it, it, it is an, an, an IDE. So I mean uh, JetBrains IntelliJ IDEA is as as a full IDE for typically Java development. It supports now it's Polyglot, it supports JavaScript and DHTML and, and Python to a lesser extent, things like that. But but just like most other you know IDEs and development tools, it has a plugin framework. And so uh, what Illuminated Cloud does is it becomes, it extends the, the core features of IntelliJ IDEA for Salesforce development. So it understands Apex and Visual Force and, the, and Lightning, and um, it allows you to uh, intuitively move metadata back and forth between the local file system and the one or more organizations, and to run unit tests and uh, run anonymous Apex, all types of things, you know, code completion, um, uh, I'm adding refactoring right now, so you can actually evolve your code base. So, you know, it's pretty much what you come to expect from an IDE, and if you're accustomed to the JetBrains tools, um, all the key bindings, the way it works, it just plugs in and just presents uh, the Salesforce features through a familiar interface. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, we're really excited to see all the new stuff you come up with now that we have that, that API we're talking about for Salesforce DX, so thank no, you. you bet. Last question for you. Uh, do you have any wish list items for the Salesforce DX roadmap? Yeah, I mean, my biggest one would be uh, to, to finish out support for the metadata types that people use to build applications. And, you know, again, as an ISV partner, um, I've been speaking to some of the, again, some of the thought leaders on the, on the DX side and within Salesforce about omissions that um, right now are a bit of a, a, an impediment to adoption of DX for us as an ISV. And, uh, you know, the good news is, is I know that those are being gathered and prioritized and, and are probably going to be addressed very quickly, but um, I'd like to see the metadata types filled out so that uh, we don't have to do any type of uh, post-processing of a scratch org when we create it, particularly manual post-processing, things like that, um, because ideally what I'd like to do is just say DX is the one thing that we need to use, aside from the tools we use to integrate with our version control provider, those CLIs, and the ones we use to, um, to automate processes around things like our CI systems, but that we only have to use DX to deal with the Salesforce part, and it's not quite there yet. Cool, cool, thanks for sharing. Scott, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to us, we really, we really appreciate it. Uh, hey, we'll, we'll see you soon, man. Yeah, thank you very much, appreciate it. Cheers, Scott. Thanks for joining us on the Don't Stop Deploying Challenge. We're excited to see all of your hard work and want to encourage you to continue learning on Trailhead. Don't forget, we're giving you a few extra days to complete the challenge, so make sure you keep at it. Remember, if you have any questions on the challenge or the modules, tweet your questions with hashtag AskForce ask or hashtag Don't Stop Deploying. Thanks, we'll see you soon.